Today I'm sharing money saving tips straight from you. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a really good day. I went to Instagram and I asked my Instagram family, what are some things that you did to save money that actually worked? So I'm going to be sharing them. Some of these are tips that I haven't tried. Some of these are tips that I haven't thought of. Now there's going to be a part two to this video, which is money saving crap that just did not work. It just was not worth the time and effort. So look for that video coming soon, but settle in and let's talk about some things that actually helped real people. But first, if you're new around here, hi, my name is Lydia Sin and I make videos on frugal and simple living. We're a debt-free family of six and I want to help you save time and save money. So if you're looking to do either one of those, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like this video and join our community. First of all, I just want to say that the number one answer was just stay home. Don't go anywhere. It costs a hundred dollars every time you leave your house. Don't go anywhere. But if that's not practical advice for you, maybe you can find some tips that work. But yes, leaving your house is expensive nowadays. Just stay home. Uh, delete shopping apps and unsubscribe from emails. I love this one. If seeing online ads or sales, coupons, buy one, get one, three wick candles for $11.95, <clears throat> triggers you to spend, go ahead and unsubscribe from all of those emails so that you don't get a big giant box of stuff on your porch that you look at and think, well, that looks expensive because it was. Okay, this one I love. Start small. A few dollars a week can add up and add more as you build wealth. So I think people have this idea that investing is all or nothing, and that is not the case. Yes, it's great to max out those contributions, but it's more important that time be on your side. So even if you're only able to put a little bit of money into your retirement or only able to invest a little bit of money in the beginning, the earlier you start is more important, continue to contribute. This is fine. Pay yourself a dollar every day. So do, like just a physical dollar into a jar, or am I making a mental note to move money at the end of the month? I'm going to have to figure out how that would work, but I like that concept. If you can make it yourself and it's practical, do it. I love that this person added if it's practical because sometimes you see DIYs and you think, well, I spent $92 on supplies to build something that could have cost me seven dollars to buy the dollar general but yes if it's practical do it yourself and i think a lot of times this can apply to the kitchen there are so many things that we think we can't do ourselves that we have to buy that you can do yourself walk down the frozen food aisle look at what is in the in the freezer cases at your grocery store you can make 95 percent of that at home and freeze it save yourself some money Wait 24 to 48 hours before actually deciding to purchase something in my Amazon cart. I love it. And sometimes you'll get a notification that the price is dropped. Online groceries on scheduled days. Make a list and follow it. If you're not going into the store, you're not impulse shopping. This is true, particularly with children. They put all the bright, shiny things at eye level. And you come home spending way more money than you intended to. So grocery pickup is your best friend. Buy nothing groups on Facebook. I've gotten so much for free that I would have otherwise paid for. I love this. Now I don't do Facebook, but I have heard great things about buy nothing groups. And I will say that Facebook is a great place to buy baby stuff when, if, if you're having a baby, as long as it's from a smoke free home, people are always getting rid of baby stuff. You do not need to go out and buy anything new. They will give it to you at a deep discount or sometimes they're just desperate and they're like please just take this off my porch being content thinking ahead looking for durability and sustainability there's so much to be said for taking what you already own cleaning it shining it and appreciating it freezing portioned foods i love this so i'm a big fan of freezing leftovers but i have never thought about taking it plating it and then freezing it so you have like your own freezer meal. I think that's genius. And then she also talked about freezing fruits and vegetables for later use, which is something I do all the time. We keep a bag 
in our freezer for, well, three different purchase purposes. One is vegetable scraps, scraps for broth. I have another bag for smoothies. So like the half a banana someone didn't eat. But then I have a third bag for jam. So I make my own jams, preserves, all of that super simple to do. And so like when I cut up strawberries, those strawberry ends where you have like pieces of strawberry, all your fruit scraps, all your apple cores, all your apple peels in a bag, make jam. And it's so good. Apple peel jam is delicious and beautiful. It's beautiful in the jar. Plan to fill your time so you don't get bored and ruin your progress. This is great. If you know that you're going to have some time off, if you know that Saturdays or Sunday afternoons or whatever is triggering for you, go ahead and plan some time. Also, I love an inexpensive hobby. I took up needlepoint. I suck at it, but I still enjoy it. I took up hand lettering. Hand lettering is basically free. Like if you have pen and paper and access to Pinterest, you don't need anything else. Again, I'm horrible at it, but I enjoy practicing. Keeping my hands busy keeps my mind busy. Also, I can do it while I listen to a podcast. Cheap hobbies, my friend. Okay, somebody suggested this. It's great. I actually do this. They said that they buy everything secondhand, but they keep a list of what they're going to need in their phone. I, I keep this in my planner for my kids so that when I go to consignment sales, I know what we're looking for. And this is like sizes, the next size we're going to go into, that sort of thing. See if you have substitutions before you buy anything. I talked about this in a grocery saving video. See what you have that you can use in place. Also, I'm gonna give you a tip. Some people are gonna not like this, but I don't care. If people give your kids gifts that your kids aren't gonna like, don't get rid of them. Put them in a closet and then give them away when you have a birthday party. So somebody gave my kids something that I knew, well they gave us three of them and I knew that we didn't need three of the exact same thing. So we kept one, put two in the closet, we gave one away and we packaged it with something that went with it and the kid we gave it to loved it. Like they still talk to me about it three years later. I'm sorry I'm laughing at this one. She says I have an oh crap, only it doesn't say crap line in my budget. Anything left over from that goes into my savings. It's very smart. It's a very smart idea because even with an emergency fund, sometimes things just pop up and you don't want to dip into that fund. If you can have an extra one or $200 to cover things, it's a good idea. I started tracking my net worth every three to six months and that was a huge motivator for me to keep saving. Remember, your net worth is not your self-worth, but if you want to track your net worth, what you're going to do is add up all your assets add up all your liabilities and subtract your liabilities from your assets. So an asset is stuff that you own outright. So money that you have in savings, retirement, the equity, money you have in savings, retirement, any anything that you own that's yours. And then a liability is any debt you have. So your mortgage, if you're still making car payments, debt payments, all of that, then you subtract it. The point is to get that number to grow. Scratch and dent open box items. Okay, I'm a big fan of the refurbed stuff. My phone is refurbished. The camera that I film on is refurbished. Um, I think my refrigerator was a floor model. I have saved thousands of dollars over the course of my life buying floor models, factory refurbished items. I don't buy any brand new. Actually, you know what, that's a lie. That's a lie. My phone that I bought last year was the first time I bought a new, brand new out of the box phone, and I bought an older model, so I didn't have to pay as much. But I, I usually don't buy new technology. Like my computers are factory refurbished from Mac. Um, that means they're sent back, they're completely redone, and then sold to you. Someone said that buying a used phone was gross. Um, I don't understand how that's gross when it's sent back to the factory, it literally cleaned and reset to their standards. Wasting money is gross. Judging how people spend their money on is gross. If you want to buy a brand new phone, it's your money. Okay. I love this. She says, keep a picture of your number one financial goal in your wallet. You can also do this on your phone. Keep it on your phone. Make it like the the lock screen. 
so that when you pick up your phone, there it is. If it's your kids going to college, if it's retirement, if it's a new car, if it's house, if it's paying off debt, if it's a new pair of shoes, if it's a vacation, whatever, it's your money. You get to decide how you want to spend it because it's your life. Make it the lock screen on your phone so that if you pick up your phone to mindlessly scroll, you got that memory. You got that, you got that reminder. Okay with saying no, not right now, I need to wait. No is one of the most powerful words in your arsenal when it comes to not just saving money, but also making decisions that you're not ready to make yet. And saying no can make people very uncomfortable, but it's important for everyone that A, we respect other people's boundaries, but also that they respect ours. So learning to say no is part of being a growing adult. It's part of managing just life. And so get comfortable with saying no and get comfortable with accepting no and not asking a bunch of follow-up questions. Take a nap. I know that sounds silly, but when you're well rested, you'll spend less money. Yeah, well, what is that halt? Don't spend money if you're hungry, anxious, lonely, or tired. Sometimes I'm all of those things at the same time. And I don't need to spend money or make big decisions during that time. Honestly, spending more at the grocery store so that I don't eat out and have foods that I love. I have said this so many times. If you want to save money on groceries, buy foods that you actually want to eat. And I don't mean junk all the time. I mean foods that you love that appeal to you. The most expensive food you buy is the food that you throw away. You don't magically become a new person in Kroger buy the foods that you actually are going to eat. Copycat recipes are amazing. Copycat recipes are the greatest thing. I'm not a Chipotle fan, but I love that lime cilantro rice. I figured out how to make it in my Instant Pot. It's delicious. Direct deposit into a different account. So instead of saving in a savings account that's tied to your checking account, you have a separate account that you can't transfer out of as easily. That's a really good strategy if you really have a hard time actually holding on to your savings. That's a good strategy. Unfollow people that make you think you need extra stuff to make your life happy. Yes. Unfollow anyone that makes you feel bad about yourself. Now, I'm not talking about unfollowing people that challenge your beliefs or that give you a new way of thinking or maybe sometimes share a little nugget that kicks your butt. I'm talking about people that just make you feel like crap all the time or who are constantly or who are constantly trying to sell you something. Sharing an ad every once in a while, sharing a swipe up every once in a while, that's fine. But when it's every single day, every single day, swipe up to the outfit I'm wearing today, maybe time to unfollow that person. Set aside fun money so that you don't blow your budget. Yes. Absolutely. This is super important because things come up that are fun that you just want to participate in. And if you don't have that money set aside, you burn out and you're more likely to overspend. She also mentioned sustainability and someone mentioned sustainability and durability. Buy nights or buy twice. Things like kids shoes, backpacks, things that you're going to use every single day. Obviously, you want to try to get the best price. Maybe buy used, coupon code, ask grandma for it for Christmas but investing in some of those higher quality items means you're not going to be replacing as frequently. No, we just put in windows in our house that it was a lot of money. We did not go with the cheapest people. Uh, we went with the best rated, best quality, the people that would also replace the windows when inevitably they get broken because I have kids that live here and we live in a hurricane zone. So th those are things that we need to look for. Putting aside money to maintain your vehicle. Absolutely. Regular maintenance, new tires, oil changes, none of these should be an emergency. And so having the idea, knowing that you're going to have to maintain a car prevents things like needing new tires from becoming an emergency. Every time I touch my chest now, I get so red. Does it like I did this? I have a hand, a hand print on there now. Those were a lot of really great tips. I would love to know some of yours. Leave me a comment below. You'll notice that the running theme through all of these was the mental struggles. 
and getting your attitude and your mind in the right place to get out of debt and make good financial choices. And I love that. So it wasn't just like I hang up my clothes on a laundry line because it saves me $10 a month. It was I have to mentally prepare myself for loneliness so that I don't spend money. This it's so much of it is about our attitude. So much about the choices we make in life are about our attitude. Also, you're not alone in this process. If you're paying off debt, if you're learning about finances for the first time in your adult life, you are not alone and you are not bad with money because nobody taught you. You're also not bad with money if you made the decision not to listen when you were 16. We, we can't beat ourselves up over bad decisions that we made before we knew what life was going to be like. So don't don't beat yourself up if you have made bad money choices. I have made every bad money choice in the world. And now my job, part of my job, is to teach people how to budget. So you can turn this ship around. Anyway, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. I really do. How you spend your time, your precious time matters. And the fact that you spend it with me is not lost on me. Also, hydrate, my friends. I have so much water. Uh, thank you for being here, and I'll see you later.